Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this episode I want to talk to you about following your dreams. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, my name is Serge Ramadi, I'm a French photographer from the beautiful city of Paris. But right now I'm traveling to San Francisco and um, I'm here for Creative Live. Last night I arrived with my wife and she did a whole bunch of time lapse because we had an amazing sunset. You know, what a great way to come into San Francisco. The iPhone 7 does amazing time lapse and you can see some of them here. All right, I want to talk to you about following your dreams. And to, to backtrack all this, when I was a kid, uh, there's two things that I wanted to do. I wanted to act and I wanted to do something with images. At the, at the time, I think it was more like computer generated images and photography, but that was my two passion. I was doing a lot of drawing, I was doing a lot of theater, and you know how it goes, you know, in my 20s, I kind of like didn't dare to follow my dreams and just went on and did some, a lot of jobs. I went into computer programming very early on, which was really not what I wanted to do, and I just did not dare to take my dreams on. But, you know, they came back to me all the time, you know, this idea of doing acting came back a lot, the idea of doing images came back a lot. Uh, in my 30s, I started, because I was doing programming, I started doing like a bit of 3D, computer generated stuff. I, I kind of liked it, but um, I was not really blown away. And, um, and acting, I wanted to do acting, but you know, for me, I kind of like missed the boat on that. Anyways, uh, I got married with my wife uh, at the age of 30, Karen, which is my wife today. And um, we were in the south of France, we moved back to Paris. And when we moved to Paris, she was really encouraged me to follow my dreams, to be an actor and to do something artistic with my life. And that was great, but we had four kids and living in Paris or in the suburbs is very expensive. And so I had to get a job, you know, and take care of the entire family. So I started to work for my brother and uh, that he created a company with some friends, a great company. They were doing search engine optimization and website for hotels really back in 99. They were that, kind of the first in that market in Paris. And that it was like a startup that really boomed. And I became the sales manager or the sales dear in that company. And although I really enjoyed the first years, more time was coming by. And I was, you know, now in, uh, in my 30s, 32, 33, I really felt that I, you know, my life was passing by and I was not going to do anything artistic. And money was good, you know, money was good, but money is not everything. And I kept telling my wife, you know, I really want to act. I want to do something with, you know, something artistic. And it was just... You know, I just felt empty, you know, and I just felt empty. Although the job was good, it was not good enough for me. Then one day I went with a buddy of mine, which I just met, Kelvin Pimon, who is my business partner today. He was a designer working with Photoshop. And, um, and we went on holidays in Guadeloupe and he showed me Photoshop for the first time in 2004. And this was a revelation to me because I had tried to do some short movies to put myself as an actor you know, back in these days, but it was like, you know, to make a movie in 2004, you didn't have the, the DSLR at the time that could do video. So, you know, you had to get a good camera, you had to get a DP, a director of photography, you had to get actors. You couldn't just make a movie like this. When he showed me Photoshop and a camera, I realized one camera, one software, the words, you know, the sky's the limit, I can do anything. So I came back to Paris with this idea that you know, at least I'm going to do some photography that's going to bring, that's going to fulfill that one of creation of image that I've had since I was a child. And so, but the thing, I knew nothing about photography. So I went to the bookstore and started buying books. Tutorials were not big at the time. And I bought a whole bunch of books, mainly on Photoshop and on, you know, how to use a camera. And boy, it was really rough because I bought a lot of books I just couldn't read. You know, the books were really complex and uh, I don't know. I just, I didn't understand it very well until I met Scott Kelby. Scott Kelby books were easy to read, simple words, step-by-step -step instructions, project-based only. You know, one thing that I do ahead when you want to learn a software is something that's going to explain you all the various menus. Like for example, right now I'm trying to learn Logic Pro and trying to, and the only tutorials and books that I find explains me all the functions of Logic Pro instead of just, let's make a song. You know, I think when you want to teach somebody, it's better to teach the software project-based. Anyway, Scott Kelby at the time was the only one doing this. And so I bought his books. I found out he was doing tutorials online. I started following his stuff. Then I, you know, I, I, uh, I got better and better and I met new inspiration. Trey Ratcliffe, you know, with the whole HDR, Photomatics, um, Eric Almas and Joel Grime. And I just started, you know, uh, I discovered also the work of Anson Adams in black and white, Henri Cartier-Bresson. And so I really got into like HDR, black and white. 
But I spend three years every night doing at least two hours of tutorials. I remember it would drive my wife crazy sometimes because, you know, instead of watching a movie, we'd have the iMac at the end of the bed and from 10 to midnight, I watched two hours of tutorials. And what I did is because I was working as a salesman selling websites from nine to six, after six, with my scooter, I would loot for clouds and follow the clouds wherever there was a good light. You know, Paris is beautiful everywhere or almost everywhere. And I just look, was looking for the light and I would take a photo. And I did this for many years. So first, it was a lot of study, a lot of investment, but I started off with my first camera, which was a little Sony camera. Then I bought the, the EOS 350D, uh, which um, was so noisy. Uh, and then uh, I, I bought the 5D Mark II later on when it came out in 2008, but I shot with the 350D. And what I did is, so I did a lot of photos, a lot of photos, and f so far it was just, I was just spending money. I had given up on the acting thing, but at least I was doing photography. In 2008, a guy by the name of Philip Vors, a hotel, he owns a hotel company called Elegancia Hotels, gave me a chance. He said, I love your stuff of Paris, you know, and he was one of the people that was very supportive of what I was doing. I'm opening up a new hotel called the Hotel Eden on, on the Champs Elysees in Paris. If you can come and shoot one room, uh, I'm going to get four other photographers to come. And if you do, you know, if we prefer your photo, then you get to shoot the entire hotel. And it was a $5,000 job. I was like, yeah. So I went there and I shoot the hotel in HDR. It was kind of the only time I used HDR, but it was a hotel which had like a whole organic wood row type of fitting and the HDR just fit perfect. And you know, when you show photos to someone and they have never seen HDR in their life, they will always, always go for the HDR. So photovimatics at the time saved my day. I got the job and that was the first money I ever made with photography. But then I was trying to, you know, find a solution to do this full time. I just felt in love with it. You know, I said, if I could only do photos and acting in my life, I would be the most happiest man on earth. The only problem is I needed a lot of money to support the four kids. And so, I made a deal with uh, my business partners at the time. They were going to sell the company. I was going to get some share and I could have enough money to become a, f uh, a photographer. But that didn't happen. 2007, 2000, 2009, there were different reasons didn't happen. And so I was waiting, 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 waiting. And in 2010, uh, I, I said to my wife, I need to find a solution. I cannot continue like this. I need to find a way to do what I want to do. I'm 40 years old now and I'm still not doing what I want to do in life. It's driving me crazy. And um, at this time, I knew a lot of, you know, very uh, great uh, hotel managers and hotel owners in Paris. And I had this crazy idea, you know, they needed photos to decorate their rooms. So I went to see a friend of mine who had two hotels, twice 25 rooms. And I said, would you buy 25 fun art prints for me to put in your hotel? Uh, you know, and explain him that I would use the money to basically change, you know, put the money aside and try to create a photographic business. And he was like, okay, I'm going to think about it. I remember it all my life. Two days later, he calls me up. He says, you know what? I'm not just going to do 25 rooms. I'm going to do the other hotels. And it was like a total of 54 rooms. And I was, I couldn't believe it. Like it was more than twice of the money I was asking him. And he says, you know what? You inspired me with you wanting to do for Rafi. I'm going to back you up. I was like, I could not believe it. I was like in the street crying. Anyways, me and my wife did a fun art prints. I resigned from my business, you know, turn over my functions to somebody else. That went really well and started my photographic journey. So at first I started doing interior design. It was kind of rough because I needed so much money per month that it was not covering everything. Then I started doing tutorials in French for a website called tutor.com and that started to be really well. So between the tutorials uh, in French and what I was doing with, uh, with the thing, I was kind of getting along by, but we had a big house and the mortgage went up and it started to be really hard and really hard, really hard. And um, you know, 2008 happened. The, 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 the interest went up and I was not making enough money and was, I was literally going to lose my house. But I just kept on doing photography, shooting Paris, interior design. And one day a miracle happened. Um, I mean, a miracle that I kind of created at first. I wanted to work with, yes, with Yellow Corner, huge galleries. They have like 10 galleries in Paris, 85 around the world. And I kept sending them emails. They would never answer for years. One day somebody told me the name of the owner. I looked up on the Yellow Pages found the guy, called him up. He said, send me an email. So I got the owner email. I sent him an email. He says, no, I don't like this. I sent him like a whole such shoot of Paris on the snow. No, I don't like it. And I just kept sending stuff and he was answering, not answering. And after a year, I almost gave up, but I was so much, uh, you know, with interest going up, I was so much losing money that 
one year after I just sent a, a one last message and he answered and he answered, says, let's meet. And he said, okay, you know what? We'll take three photos of you. We'll do a test with three photos. I was like, oh, I'm happy. But I knew that because I knew somebody who worked there that to, you know, financially to be good, you need at least 20 photos. So I started with three photos and something miraculously happened. I put in those three photos. A week after, the owner calls me back and says, you know what? I've got a friend, you know, uh, in Flammarion, big publishing company, and we want to do books. We want to do books. And books, uh, you know, we want to find a publisher, a big publisher that we can co-publish with. And so he said Flammarion would be perfect, one of the biggest publishers in France. And when I'm like, great. And he says, okay, I'm going to check with them and see, you know, if they like your photos. So he goes to check with them, comes back a week after and says, you know what? Uh, he loves your photos. We want to make a book deal with you. I was like, oh my God, this is great. And um, now that's the miracle. Two days after, I get a, an email from a man called Henrik Tenhaus from Germany. And he says, I just looked at your website and I love your photos. I want to make a book about Paris. And I say, yeah, but I'm already engaged. I'm committed to uh, do something with Yellow Corner. They're going to go uh, co-publishing with Flammarion, biggest publisher in France. And they're like, what do you mean, Flammarion? We are much bigger. We are international. We are specialists in big coffee table books. And, you know, you should sign with us. I'm like, I cannot. I'm really coming. I'm about to sign. He says, no, no, no. I'm flying tomorrow. I want to meet this guy from Yellow Corner. And I will convince them to co-publish with me instead of Flammarion. I'm like, really? He flew over the next day with two other people from his company. Met with the two owners of Yellow Corner. We had a big lunch. I was like, oh, this is, this is exciting. And... Um, and, he, and they made a deal. They, they made a deal. They became co-publishers that day. And now they have co-published over 50 books, opened many stores. It started that day. And so, but the guy says, I just don't want a book about Paris. I want a book about all the cities in the world. So we're going to start with Paris and New York. And I was like, all right. So we signed a deal on Paris and New York. But then the owner of Yellow Corner came back to me and says, you know what? Uh, you have, you know, they wanted you so much that instead of taking three photos from you, we're going to take 27 photos. So now all of a sudden I got two book deals, 27 photos in galleries, and I finally was making enough money, more money than I ever dreamed of, even better than the, what I ever did as a sales manager uh, in the past. I was like, this is so good. And the acting came back later, but I'll talk about the acting later because it's a whole different story. But there's a few things that I learned that I want to share. First off, you know, don't wait to the age of 40 to do what you want to do in life. Do it as soon and as fast as you can. Because if you do what you want to do in life, you will be so excited. You will have so much energy that no matter how hard it is, things will just align because it's what you want to do. If you don't know what to do, you know, as Steve Jobs says, says keep looking. You know, find something that really excites you. I think that happiness is being able to, you know, go toward a goal and having a journey that you really like. And I've never been so much happier than I've been doing photography and tutorials and not acting. And honestly, if I knew it was going to be possible, that is, is not the right word, but possible, I would have done it earlier. But I thought it was impossible. So that's what I want to say. You know, I believe that miracle happens when you start aligning your goals into who you are and what you want to do. So don't waste your time, you know, living somebody else's life, living somebody else's purpose. For example, you know, uh, my, my friends, they really wanted me to be a great manager and that was their purpose. It was not my purpose. It was a great purpose. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with having a corporate position, but it was not what I wanted to do. So don't waste your life, you know, doing something, somebody else's goal or dreams. Do your own dreams. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is study a lot. You know, find any subject, find the good tutorials, you know, the, the, the ones that are really will give you the basic of the subject. Right now I'm trying to learn music and I'm desperately looking for great tutorials on music and logic. I know nothing about it, but I'm passionate. I really want, I've always wanted to learn music too. And now, you know, things are better for me. I want to spend time doing some music. I have the hardest time in the world finding great tutorials that are easy to use step by step, you know, on making music. So do the same thing. Find great tutorials, find mentors you look up to. Mine are pretty good, but there is other ones there. Scott Kelby's, uh, Kelby One is amazing. Trey Ratcliffe is amazing. Uh, Joel Grime are amazing. You know, study as much as you can. Practice, practice, practice. And then have a website with your best of the best photos. And you will see it's going to work out for you. I have so many people writing me over the last year saying me, I was a policeman, I was this, I was that, and now I'm a full-time photographer. Your tutorials have helped me. Thank you so much. Don't waste your time 
living somebody else's life. Live your life. So that was today's video and check out the Hollywoodans. Check also out my latest course, my Photoshop for Photographer. I did a redid my biggest push on Photoshop ever. You know, eight hours, 66 videos. Check it out. Thank you so much and see you tomorrow.